Grace and peace to you all in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And welcome to worship. Yes, worship at St. Andrew Presbyterian Church. We're so glad that you could make it uh, at least online uh, to our time together. Uh, as you can tell, this is a little bit different setup than we normally have for a Sunday morning. Instead of being up at the church and behind a pulpit in the same room with you all, uh, I am here in the warmth of my house. Uh, wearing a flannel shirt instead of a robe and a stole to try to keep warm. Uh, we hope that throughout this ordeal this past week with the ice and the freezing rain uh, and the frigid temperatures that you have been staying safe and warm. Uh, we have been praying for you all uh, that that has been the case. Uh, but we are glad, even though we are not meeting in person this morning, we are glad that we are still able through this miracle of technology to be together uh, here for worship, even though it looks a little different. So we are so glad that you are here. A few announcements as we begin our time together. Uh, a couple of uh, items that were scheduled to happen this past week have been postponed uh, to this week. Uh, our session meeting, which was supposed to be held last Wednesday at 2 p.m., has been moved to this coming Wednesday afternoon, uh, but not at 2 p.m., at 3 p.m. So please do note that uh, time change if you were on the session. At 4.30, our choir will be practicing as normal at their normal time. And then at 5.30, we will have our uh, Connect program where we will be having bingo night. We had a lot of fun the last time we did it, and I know that this time will be a lot of fun too. So please make plans to get out of the house since you've been stuffed in it for the past week. Uh, and come uh, have some fun with us on Wednesday evening. Uh, also, we were supposed to have a congregational meeting uh, following our in-person worship today, uh, but since we are not meeting in person, uh, we will be postponing that until next Sunday, which is January 28th. So uh, please make sure uh, as you come to worship next Sunday that you plan to stick around for a few minutes following worship uh, so that you can hear some reports from various committees around our church to hear what we've been up to. Uh, and hopefully that will encourage you to get involved yourself in the different ways that we are working on growing our faith and serving uh, the community in God's name. So please make plans to be there for that congregational informational meeting next Sunday following worship. Folks, I do believe that's all we have for announcements at the time being. Uh, so now we turn our hearts and our minds towards uh, worship of God. Um, now, I hope that you've noticed in the description of this video, whether it's on Facebook or YouTube, I've tried to attach uh, a PDF file that you can download, print out, whatever's easiest to you, um, so that you can follow along and so that you can be as immersed in this worship as possible. There will still be some call and response as there normally is, on a Sunday morning, and even though I won't be able to hear you, my hope is that you having a copy of this uh, bulletin that may look a little different than normal, but you having that will allow you uh, to join in uh, in some of the parts of worship that you're used to joining in on. So uh, please, if you do not have that yet, I encourage you to pause this video and go bring it up on your laptop, smartphone or print it out, whatever is easiest for you so that you can join me in this worship today. So friends, let us now be called to worship. God is our rock and our salvation. We wait to hear from God. Our souls wait. We depend on God alone. We release what will pass away and rest in God's enduring mercy. Though God calls us down difficult paths, we answer, relying on God's help, for God keeps calling us to the work. Let us worship God. Let us pray together our gathering prayer. Let's pray. Great and wonderful God, Jesus awakened the disciples to a new life-changing purpose that calls them to drop it all and follow him. You call us here from our everyday work in this very busy world. Have we dropped it all to follow you? Awaken us, we pray. Show us how to leave everything behind 
and with our lives proclaim the good news that your kingdom is drawing near. Make us into vessels that carry your message of love, that we might with others turn around, see, and believe. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Friends, trusting in the promise of grace, let us now pour out our hearts before God and confess our sins together. Let us pray aloud the prayer of confession. Forgiving God, we repent of all the ways we turn from you. You call, but we do not listen. You show us your path, but we prefer our own way. You tell us to let go, but we hold on tightly to what we have. Forgive us, heal us, and lead us back to you, that we might show mercy to others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friends, this is the word of the Lord to us today and every day. In Jesus Christ, you are forgiven by God, and you are indeed given new life. Thanks be to God. We are forgiven. As we approach God's word this morning, let us first go to God in prayer, this time as we pray for illumination. Let us pray. Speak to us your word, O God, that we may hear Jesus' call to be his disciples. Amen. My friends, our first text this morning comes from the letter uh, to the Corinthians, the first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 7, verses 29 through 32a. Listen for the word of the Lord to us. I mean, brothers and sisters, the appointed time has grown short. From now on, let even those who have wives be as though they had none, and those who mourn as though they were not mourning. And those who rejoice as though they were not rejoicing. And those who buy as though they had no possessions. And those who deal with the world as though they had no dealings with it. For the present form of this world is passing away. I want you to be free of anxieties. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Friends, our gospel lesson this morning comes from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verses 14 through 20. Listen, this is the story of God for the people of God. Now, after John the Baptist was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent. And believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John who were in their boat mending their nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, folks, what an interesting week this has been, right? Listen, I can be a homebody with the best of introverts, but when I'm forced to stay indoors, it's a whole different ball game. You know, earlier today, I caught myself having a conversation out loud with myself. Uh, slowing down can be difficult, and stopping what we're doing completely, well, that can be even tougher. 
you know, the rain, the freezing rain, the snow, the ice, and the frigid temperatures have all dictated that whether we like it or not, we have to stay indoors. We need to stay indoors. We have to stop. No errands, no car rides, no trips, no school, no work. Everything just stops. Now, as I was taught in seminary, extraordinary events that happen to or around us can be excellent times for a preacher to look at this world that we live in through a different lens, from a different angle. Now, we normally try to do that anyway, but prolonged ice on the roads can help shake you out of your normal routine to look for new ways to listen for God and to God. God. And so with that line of thinking, I thought, well, wouldn't it be cute if I could name my sermon Freeze or something cheesy like that? You know, I was thinking, well, I can encourage my folks that it's okay to slow down sometimes. It's good sometimes to completely stop. In a world that's always in a rush, isn't it good news to hear that we should slow down every once in a while? It sure sounds like good news to me. And so confident in my choice of topic for this message, I forged ahead. Now, there's only one problem. Our scripture lessons from 1 Corinthians and the Gospel of Mark won't let that be my message. Listen again to what Paul says. He says, I mean, brothers and sisters, the appointed time has grown short. From now on, let even those who have wives be as though they had none, and those who mourn as though they were not mourning, and those who rejoice as though they were not rejoicing, and those who buy as though they had no possessions, and those who deal with the world as though they had no dealings with it. For the present form of this world is passing away. The appointed time has grown short. This present form of the world is passing away. And it sure sounds like Paul isn't slowing down at all, does it? In fact, it seems like he's encouraging the opposite. Gee, thanks, Paul, for helping me out with my sermon. Okay, well, since Paul wasn't playing along... Maybe the author of the Gospel of Mark can help me out at least. Maybe Jesus can help me out. And Jesus said, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. Okay, well that's not helping either. Well, maybe, maybe Andrew and Simon will actually slow down. And immediately, they left their nets and followed him. Oh, well, that's okay. I won't be determined. There's still James and John to go. Maybe they will teach us it's okay to slow down and to take our time. I've always liked them the best out of the disciples anyway. They for sure will slow down, right? Let me look at the text again. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. Oh. Well, just, just, a, just a second, folks. Let me get my old sermon here. Sorry, I just had to get rid of that old sermon idea. It wasn't good anyway. But notice that instead of the exhortations to slow down or to stop, as I had hoped, instead there is urgency here in this text. Our scripture encourages us to live like there is no time to lose. 
I think we have just spent so much time in Advent and Christmas celebrating Christ coming into this world. And now that season with all its hustle and bustle and busyness is in our rearview mirror. And so the temptation then is to relax. It's to sit back and it's to slow down at least until Easter, right? But folks, think. Christ has been born. The light of the world is here. The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God has come near. So repent and believe in the good news. For the present form of this world is passing away. The clock is ticking. There's no time to lose. Now, unfortunately, more often than not, people will hear a message like this and will hear in Jesus' words a call, but not a call to discipleship, a call to be saved. You know, making sure that folks get into heaven before it's too late. They'll say the end is near. It's, it's not too late to get saved, repent, believe. But notice here that Jesus in our gospel lesson is not talking about the afterlife. He's not talking about heaven and hell here. He is proclaiming that the kingdom of God is near. That he has ushered in the kingdom of God. And not to some place far off from us. But rather right here on this earth of ours. In the here and now. The call to the disciples is not one of salvation. It is one of discipleship. He essentially says, Andrew, Simon, James, John, the kingdom of God is near. Repent, believe in the good news, and follow me. There's work to be done, fellas. Leave your old life behind. There's no time to waste here. Because I'm here and this work is important. It is urgent that we spread this good news to a world that desperately needs it. And I'm not talking about tomorrow. I'm not talking about next week. I'm not talking about when you're finally prepared, when you have all your questions answered, when you're finally fully ready. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about now. So let's go. And they did. So what about you? How urgent is it for you to also spread this good news that is so desperately needed in this world? How pressing is your desire to follow Jesus Christ? And do your actions reflect that desire and that urgency? Now, friends, if this weather has caused you to be restless, then I say good. Let that restlessness that's been building up in you remind you of the call of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on your life. Don't let it frustrate you. Let it fuel you for that call. Not for a time down the line. Not sometime in the future. But now. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Friends, having heard the word of the Lord to us this morning, we, had, we now have an opportunity to respond to God's call. And we do so by joining our voices together, by saying what it is we believe together as a community of faith. This morning, we will use a familiar affirmation, the Apostles' Creed. So Christian, what do you believe? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now, my friends, we turn our hearts and our minds back to God in prayer as we pray for the world, for the church, and for ourselves. Let us pray. God, you are a God of new callings and new visions. And so we bring before you the prayers of this world. We pray for people highly placed in power, that they may focus their eyes on you. And we pray for the lowly victims of power, that they may also focus their eyes on you. We pray for those who bless with their lips, but curse with their mouths, including ourselves. We pray for those who are ill and those who are facing the end of life. Give to them the gift of prayer that they may pour out their hearts to you. We pray for your church and its leaders, that we may hear and respond to your call to be fishers of people. In this dangerously cold weather, we can't help but think of those without a roof over their head, without heat to keep them warm. We not only ask you to be with them, we ask that you move in our hearts that as we think of them, that it would spur us into action to spread good news in tangible ways to those who desperately need it. Rock of our salvation, through Christ and your Holy Spirit, bring us with courage and inspiration into the new world that you are shaping, even as the world as we know it is passing away. God, we pray all of this through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. My friends, we have now come to the end of our time of worship. We will leave this digital gathering and we will return to our lives. As the snow and the ice melts, we will return to our normal schedules and our normal routines. But as we do so, don't forget that urgency. And don't forget God's call to serve now, to work now, to be a disciple now. As you go, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, 
and the fellowship and communion of the Holy Spirit be with you and all those you love, now and forevermore. Amen.